Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to this video. I have so much that I want to share today. <sighs> it's going to be a little bit more personal and it's going to be coming from a much deeper place than a lot of my videos have been recently. I was sitting in connection with myself this morning and just like tuning in, tapping in, being like, all right, sitting, just literally just sitting with myself in presence. And I was speaking to my intuition and I was asking the question, like, what do I want to explore, experience and express today? And not from a place of like, I feel like this question is so, it's really effective in bringing me back to the truth of what I want to experience in my own desires rather than what I feel like I need to do in order to get the things that I think are outside of me. So my ego will come up with like, or the ego, the mind um, will come up with, you know, a lot of different things based on, you know, its needs. So like, you know, I feel like I need validation from other people. I feel like I need to feel secure. I feel like I need this so I can create this and this and this, right? So it's like, and there's, you know, those things are there and I've created those things. I exclusive created those things exclusively for a really long time. But I feel like when, <clears throat> I'm creating from that space it creates it's um it's building resistance it's building resistance to what is because I'm unconsciously and then I guess like it's filtering into my life looking for the outcome of those things so rather than just like you know I'm whole I know I have everything I need within me and I'm going to create from this place of full fullness and wholeness when you're creating from this place of like I'm creating to get something then you're also looking for the outcome or like you, you, you want to take stock of what you've got. And so I've noticed there's this like, yesterday I just hit this brick wall of resistance, right? There was this voice just being like, I fucking hate you. Like this inner, like stubborn, rebellious, I think maybe like 16 year old me or like a part of me that's, you know, arrested in her development in that sense. Um, just fighting me, like fighting me hardcore. I don't want to do anything. Like, I hate this. I hate you. Like, just re imagine that, like you're in that, you know, teenage state, you know, I don't know what you guys went through as a teenager, but for me, I was very, yeah, I was headstrong. I was rebellious. I was very like, if I didn't want to do something, like you knew about it, you really knew about it. And if I was upset about something, I almost couldn't help myself. I was very like expressive about that. And I was like, I hate this. And I would hold on to grudges. And I would really, because I felt, you know, that was the only way I felt that I could have any power and any say in what was going on in my life. I felt so powerless and out of control and like everyone else was making all these decisions for me and I had minimal kind of, you know, freedoms to go and do what I wanted to do and be who I was in the world and experience what I wanted to experience. So me taking a stance and being like, you know, that hatred, it seemed to be the only thing at the time. This is like interesting as I'm saying and I'm having, you know, getting clarity about this. I, it seemed to be the only thing at the time that I could use to, yeah, to feel any real sense of, of power was my resistance. So if you think about if you're in an environment that's kind of authoritarian, but in a negative way, like really, you know, top down, hierarchical, like this, 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 you feel like if you're out of, like out of touch with your ability to act autonomously, which I would, de I definitely was at that time. And I mean, what 16 year old kind of isn't unless you're raised with like a, a sense of like, no, you can just, you know, it's like I had this vision the other day of literally just, and I did this once when I was like 11 years old, just like moving through the imaginary bars that were put up around the house and literally just like walking out the front door and not looking back. So when you grow up in an environment that's very like restrictive and controlling, it literally felt like a prison. You know, I felt like there was, you know, cages and bars and something awful. You know, I didn't even think about kind of walking out until I did <laughs> um, because, I, you know, there's these bars that are created by words and by feelings and emotions and punishment and, and, and this kind of felt sense of like, no, you can't leave. Like you, you are stuck here. Um, and then, you know, that's cultural, it's like historical, it's like the context of that. You know what I mean? It's very, yeah. I mean, there's these invisible bars that are around the house. And I remember one day when I was 11, I literally just walked out the front door. I was told that I couldn't do something that I wanted to do. And I literally just did it anyway. And I just walked out and it was this moment of like, 
um, <laughs> like, you know, you realize the, the gate was unlocked the whole time and the prison doors were, you know, swung fucking wide open and they didn't even exist. And then you're out in the world and you're walking around and you're like, I could have been doing this forever. Like I could have always been doing this. And I mean, there's layers to this because as an 11 year old, you know, it's challenging to survive in the world and it's on your own. And you know, you do, yeah, I did rely on my parents for like, you know, food and shelter and warmth and, and security in, in whatever way that I, yeah, the, the way that humans need it, like we, and children, we need that security. Um, but it was just like, yeah, I remember because I didn't feel like, I think it's because I didn't feel like I could access that security myself that I felt like the only option that I had was to Yeah, I felt so powerless. I felt so powerless to be able to like fight for myself, to stand for myself, to act for myself, to do what and create what I wanted to create. The only option that I saw was to resist what was happening. And I did that with my, my hatred and my, this like force of resistance. And it's interesting now, you know, like I'm a 30 year old woman, I'm t about to turn 31. And looking back at that time in my life and look, and, and now like, you know, feeling this part of myself, and feeling this like internal resistance to the things that I want to do. I have all this autonomy now. I have this. But a part of me still feels like I don't. And a part of me I think is still stuck in that. You know yeah that arrested development of like. The only power that I have to stop. Whatever's happening. Because I you know I feel scared or whatever. The only power I have and in this is like. To fight against it. Which is like, you know, that, that I think about now, I think about, it's just bringing up some like, you know, self, more self-compassion for that part of myself because it's like, fuck, of course, <sighs> the only power she thinks, yeah, she has to stop what's, what's happening and what's going on is like to fight, yeah, to fight against it. But it's like, and then it's, it begs the question, like, why do I want to stop what's going on? Like, why does that part of me, that 16 year old girl. Why does she want to stop what's, what's, what's happening in my life right now? I mean, I think it's just because she's scared, right? It's just because we're all, it's because that part of me is scared. She's terrified. And this is like, this is this interesting, um, this new way of dealing with resistance that I think a lot of us are catching on to now. Well, hopefully, um, it's like rather than pushing through rather than just like, cause you can't, you can't push through this. Like no amount of like, just get on with it will resolve this internal conflict. It's always just there. And that voice, you know, it keeps coming back until it's like reconciled. There's another thread that I want to pull in here and I'm hoping that they'll <sighs> There's another thread that I want to pull in here now and, and I think they'll um they'll come together at the end. So this thread is about expectations and the expectations that we have for ourselves at, at particular stages in our lives. And how they can hinder us from being fully present with the reality of what we're experiencing. Because we're constantly comparing where we are with where we thought we'd be. <laughs> and this is, oh my god, this is so my journey right now. So, yeah, like I said, I'm 30. I'm about to turn 31. I had some really, really clear ideas and expectations of where I thought I would be. And where I wanted to be at this age. And they included a lot of different things. Like, I, you know, I was wanted to be like, on stages all over the world and I still you know I, I still think I still know that that will happen in one in one way or another um, that that's a dream that I don't yeah I don't want to put a I don't need to put a deadline on I'm still yeah I can feel that there's a little bit of doesn't feel fully embodied yet but yeah there's so there's a lot of things what else um, I thought I'd you know be surrounded by like 
just in really like deep connection and community and collaboration with like epic other like artists and like change makers and stuff like that you know I thought it'd be yeah just yeah that deep sense of connection and collaboration um I've been out of community really like the reality is that I've been yeah I've kind of extricated myself from community in the last like two years one particular community and at the same time have found a grounding and a sense of like place in my physical community of all places which is you know I'm living in the town like very close to the town that I grew up in and I mean 18 year old me if you'd have if you'd have told me at 18 that I would be at 30 living back here in a house with my mum I would have just spat the dummy like I would have been mortified because so much of what I wanted to do then was all about you know leaving this place and seeing the world and escaping like escaping right and this is and again it comes back to that 16 year old who felt so trapped who felt so imprisoned that all she wanted to do was escape and so yeah okay this is tying in really nicely I was watching this Paris Hilton doco the other day and and it's the perfect example of these fantasies that we create based on you know a painful current reality so Paris was talking about how when she she literally went to a camp for troubled children which was just basically institutionalized child abuse um, and they had these children literally locked up in these cells and awful things that they would make them do it was forced labor it was like a kind of slavery in a sense um, it was absolutely horrific the things that yeah she was subject to and then she said this this you know this is happening all around America this is happening I wonder if it's happening in Australia I'm not sure um, but when she was in this one particular confinement like confined space she would sit in there feeling so helpless and powerless and like enraged and she would dream about a future that she wanted and she would and literally had these like the visual was like this glitter coming in front of her eyes and it was like these like what we now know is like it's golden shadow it's fantasy it's like what we're, our mind and what we create as a way to help us deal with like the unbelievable unbearable overwhelm of that like can you imagine being in that experience i mean you probably can't because we've all had that experience especially if you've grown up in a home where there was control like authoritarian measures of control like punishment reward like coercion like it's just all of these abuses like child abuses that are so invisible in our world right now and that we're only just kind of awakening to it's like i mean you know our generation our, you know millennials sometimes i feel, feel like we idolize our parents and it's like we have this thing where well i've had this it's like well at least they weren't my grandparents like you know there's a there's a gratitude that like and an acknowledgement that things are progressing but fuck i mean we still copped a lot of shit we still copped so much and it was it was kind of like this like gaslighting kind of abuse i feel like with millennials parents like gen x parenting millennials because it was it was subtle it was sneaky it was all of the ways that their unresolved trauma kind of came out in like these you know they weren't culturally it was pretty frowned upon to actually exert physical violence even though i'm sure like i know for a fact that that's happened all over but anyway nub in the gist it was, yeah, it was frowned upon to, I'm going to continue that train of thought because I feel like it's, you know, it's, it's powerful and I don't want to minimize myself. But yeah, you know, they didn't, maybe they didn't hit us, but the way that they, that their unhealed wounds kind of came out was really like manipulative. It was coercive. It was, you know, it was controlling. It was abuse that was like, it was just neglect. A lot of it was just fucking neglect. Like we have... awful feeling just then that my volume was all the way down and therefore it wasn't recording volume but I'm pretty oh! this is gonna make for really great viewing apologies guys um yeah gotcha all right at least we're it's bringing some lightness to the topic <laughs> okay so yeah, you know, a lot of us experience these like, you know, yeah, neglect, this neglect where we as a generation and, you know, just human beings, like 
we had all these needs and we have all of these needs that our parents did not have the capacity to meet for us. And, you know, there's a lot of diagnoses, a lot of millennials are kind of, we're, you know, getting these diagnoses now and, you know, we're coming out as like, you know, I've got, you know, ADHD, I'm autistic, I've got, you know, all of these things that just weren't, just, which is completely missed. Um, and all of that speaks to this, like, yeah, this overwhelming, this overarching, like, it's just unconsciousness, but, you know, and it's also like, you know, it, as, a, as a child, it feels like neglect. It's just the parents were just, you know, our parents just didn't know. They just, you know, my parents just didn't know how to kind of, they didn't have the awareness to see what I needed in a lot of respects. And so as a child, that feels like neglect. It feels like, well, I have all these needs and I have all this, like, I'm, I am who I am. And... I feel like that's not okay. Like, it's not okay for me to be who I am because, you know, I can't get my needs met. <laughs> like, you know, as my, like my, my natural innate needs, like they're not being met in this environment. So what am I going to, to do and create so that I can survive this like unbelievable pain that comes from, yeah, from feeling like you just have all these needs and you can't be who you are. There's so much more there. <sighs> Chills. Oh, this is, you can tell, this is like deeply, deeply personal and my body's like processing it on this like real visceral level. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So we create, you know, we disassociate and we go into these fantasies, right? And we create these like, from this place of feeling trapped and stuck and like constricted, imprisoned. It's like we dream about what we'll do when we're free. <laughs> and you know, these dreams, of course, they're fantastical. It's like we're swinging the fucking pendulum because we're all the way over here and like sorrow and shame and, and yeah, just pain. And then, you know, of course we want to create this like or perceived pain because that's when you look at it from different, you know, angles, you can see the reality of those experiences and there's less pain. It's more of like, oh, there's, you know, when you, you know, you guys, when we, when I do, when I've done like, you know, trauma healing, basically you view it from different, I can view it from different perspectives and I see that, oh, my parents were, they just literally didn't know. They didn't have the capacity. It wasn't malicious. It was just, you know, they love me so much. They just, I didn't yeah, they didn't have the capacity to meet me in a lot of the ways that I deserved to be meted as like a, you know, a, a, a whole, like an innocent, pure being as a child. So there's this perceived pain. And then there's like this, this pendulum swing over here. That's like, well, okay, well, it's, you know, I'm going to have ultimate freedom and I'm going to have ultimate resources, you know, like I have no resources, I have no freedom. Well, I'm going to have all the resources and I'm going to have complete freedom and I'm going to have total, you know, and I have no power. I'm going to be the most powerful person in the world. Like my, my, you know, when I was little, one of my, you know, ambitions was to be prime minister. So it's like, I think it speaks to just this desire of the power, the, the child feeling powerless to have some sort of, you know, like I can, you know, I want to, People will listen to what I have to say and, you know, people will hear me and I'll be able to do whatever the fuck I want. And this tracks into like our 20s and I can see this a lot. I'm seeing this now as I'm saying it, like in this culture of like personal development and you can have it all manifestation. It is just a lot of powerless children, like trying to overcompensate for these feelings of inadequacy and yeah, and, and just feeling like they, they can't have these resources. They're creating all of these dreams that aren't really dreams. They're more like, yeah, they're fantasies um, about, you know, I'll have it all and I'll do it all and I'll be it all. And I'll, and that was mine. It was like, I'll have, you know, I'll be so powerful and everyone will look at me and I'll have like, you know, validation from everywhere and billions of people will know my name. And it's just, it's just this classic overcompensation. And it's like, fuck, what's, what's here? What's in the middle? Like what's, you know, if the pendulum's swinging the fuck away out here, what's here? What's the, where's the truth? Where's like, where's the truth of who I am in that? Because it's certainly not out here. Like I'm not powerless and I'm also not, I don't want to be like,
worshipped and idolized as a god. Because that's not real either. I mean, I am God in the sense that we're all ex unique, unique inf expressions of infinity and divinity. But <laughs> it sounded so like, like a, like a soundbite. But it's also like pedestaling myself and having this like, what's the word? Grandiose, idealized. What's the word I'm thinking of? I don't know. This is really fun, by the way. I'm really enjoying this. This thing over here, you know, this like, yeah, this version, this superficial version of myself where it's like, you know, I'm better than everyone because I felt so much worse. You know, I'm like, I'm not less than and I'm not greater than. So what am I? Where am I? And it is like this, like this, this centering, this like trapdoor through and, you know, through the falling through the bottom of the earth or like falling through the, to the center of the earth. But it's, it's, it's the truth and it's authenticity. Oh, <laughs> because this is, and I know how shiny this looks and I know, you know, and I think this is like where I've been getting a little bit caught up and stuck and kind of like, you know, I know the truth of who I am and my authenticity, but I still feel like I'm, you know, lost a little bit in the golden shadow. And I, yeah, where this is, it's like, it's, it's tempting over here because it, it looks so illustrious. It looks so, you know, like you think, look at Taylor Swift and I think I've spoken about it before in this context and I don't mean like the real authentic Taylor Swift and like the human being the woman I mean like the brand I mean the like the projection on the world stage that is this like mega it's not you know it's not one woman she's not a human she is human but in the sense that like her brand is not based on that it is a combination of like millions you know thousands of people that work to create this, like, you know, I wrote about this the other day, like the, this Frankenstein's monster. And that's what celebrity is, right? It's like this, it's pieces and parts pulled together to kind of create this distorted, warped, you know, glamorous, but you know, if you look beneath the surface, it's not actually glamorous at all. It's like, you know, listen to the lyrics, like listen to the, um, the message, like in, in, this, in a lot of like the songs and the music and, and, <laughs> if you look a bit closer it's not as like shiny as it seems and I think that's you know that's just golden shadow and it fucking that's the crux of it is like it looks so awesome and then you look a little bit closer and you get the, into the nitty gritty of it and it's like oof actually no and there's this pull from your authenticity and from my authenticity there's this pull back to center that's continuously happening like you know that's not it. Come back here. Come back here. But I just want no. Come back. Come back. But it looks so no. <laughs> it's like because it looks yeah. Especially in you know the the times when especially to the parts of you that are still arrested in this in this development. It's like there's parts of me that do feel you know still powerless and scared and so fucking scared. And so it's really for those parts it's like therapy to you know get lost in this fantasy and to go after these goals. It's like they're. They're trying to balance themselves out. And so, you know, as an adult, as an authentic, you know, whole human being, as a woman, it's my sovereign response, as a sovereign being, it's my responsibility to work with those pieces of myself rather than letting myself get carried away, you know, letting that 16 year old create for me. Do you know what I mean? Because as much as like, you know, I want to harness so much of my inner 16 year old self because there's so much there that's like juicy and fiery and like, fuck yes. And I also need to like work with her to heal, to explore, express experience, comfort her. Cause she's, yeah. And work with and comfort her from like, yeah, I just want to work with her. I don't want to work against her. Because she's already working, trying to, you know, there's already this. 
like this resistance. So if I come in like, you know, well, it's just, it's just these like, you know, it's this internal mother daughter conflict, right? That's, we see so much in the world between mothers and daughters. It's interesting that, yeah, I'm seeing that a little bit in my actual relationship with my mum now. But yeah, fuck, we're going on a journey today. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I had, yeah, I created a lot of these and even well into my early twenties, it's the same like piece. I created a lot of these, um, yeah, ideas and wrote scripts and, you know, this is what I'll be doing, this is who I'll be with, this is where I'll be. And I, it's great to dream. It's amazing to dream. I feel like my dreams now, and this is, you know, it's part of the journey. I don't think I could have, no, I don't, obviously I couldn't have avoided it because I didn't, <laughs> you know? But now there is this really, where I'm at right now, there's this really clear, like, sense of, I just, I said to a, a coach, a mentor the other night, like, I just want to get drunk on the night sky. And it feels like I'm, I've been walking around my street at night time and there's so many fucking street lights that I can't see the stars properly. And it just fucks me. And I feel like it irks me. And I feel like that's, yeah, I'm just craving that like really deep authenticity from myself and nothing else. Like just t shut off the street lights. This is follow the metaphor. Shut off the street lights. Just let's come into holy communion with like the the night sky and the stars let's just get drunk in the blackness this is the you know this is the vibe it's like it's all right here and it's the same like this the question that i started with what do i want to explore and express and experience and it's like the truth of that and yeah where i feel like there's a little bit lingering and this will probably just like dissolve and disintegrate as i land more in here is just like, am I, you know, and it's this question that I still have sometimes, like, am I good enough? Like, am I doing it right? Because I know that there's so much in me and I want to, and all I've ever wanted was to kind of like, have a great life with myself, you know? Like, yeah, create an awesome, a great life and experience life as Jay Schaefer and myself and just like, like it and enjoy it and fucking have a good time and, you know, do all, you know, create and see what I'm capable of. I mean, there's so much to that. I can feel this, like, this, this, my mind is, like, settling. It's really lovely. Because there's, yeah, it's this happening in my mind, in the mind during the day. There's, like, this not good enough. Oh, create fantasy, inadequacy, fantasy, you know? Um, it's like, use this to overcompensate for that. Use this to overcome this. And it's, yeah. <sighs> Mate, I could spend decades unraveling this. I hope I don't. Because <laughs> it's, you know, fuck. Meanwhile, all of this is like waiting for me to just like drop the fuck in. Like I am right now. And just like, because there's this beautiful thing that happens when I embody myself and my, my enoughness. I'm not like, wasting my time during the day chasing a fantasy and like doing things that I think will make me you know appear a certain way to people or you know do achieve a certain outcome I just I'm like oh I'm enough cool what do I want to do what do I want to explore what do I want to express what do I want to experience and it's not this like you know wasting my energy on this fucking rat this um these hamster wheels of like proving and all of these things, it's like, you know, when I do this, when I do this and sacrificing myself in the meantime, because it's like my energy's pouring out into these things where I'm going round and round and round and round. And even this morning in meditation, I was like, heard the voice being like, just one more thing and then you'll be enough. And I was like, baby girl, that's a lie. <laughs> you are lying to yourself. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's, it's challenging and it's hard when like things don't go the way that I thought that they would. I think it just like re brings up that all over again. It's like this, 
you know, I'll have an idea of what I want to create. Even just recently in the last couple of weeks, I'll have an idea of what I want to create and it doesn't come to pass. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And then that makes me want to be like, oh, you know, question, you know, it's like, stop it. Yeah. So yeah, it's just giving myself permission to let go of those fantasies. <laughs> Did you hear that? Because <laughs> what, you know, they're obviously serving a purpose. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. Otherwise, I wouldn't have held on to them for this song. So that's, the, yeah, that'll be my next question for myself is like, why, you know, why have I held on to them so, for so long? Why am I holding on to them? And it's like, yeah, the answer is like, I think they'll give me, and then so I just got, it's like, I think they'll give me what I want. Okay, well, what is it that I want? Truth, love, freedom, beauty, but all those things are right here. It's all here. And this is literally how I got myself out of bed this morning. It went from being like resistance, resistance, I don't want to get out of bed, I don't want to do today because nothing is working out the way I thought and I'm not getting the outcome I want to, oh, I already have exactly what I want. Okay, Jay, what do you value? Truth, beauty, freedom, human connection, fellowship. I'm like, oh, great, you already have those things. Live in them. And then I was like, oh, cool, all right, out of bed we go. And this is like, I literally have these conversations with myself and when I lie down to nap and I feel like this is so important for like ongoing mental health because depression is caused by like the compounding of these disappointments. And like you think about, you know, these are what zaps your zest for life. Like if you're constantly like being disappointed and you're constantly not getting what you thought you wanted, it creates this like false feedback loop of like, I'm not good enough. I can't have what I want. I'm powerless. I'm this and that, which is ironic because that's, yeah, that's, remember the 16 year old over here. So she's probably the one like, yeah, she's looking for her sense of power in like her ability to, you know, manifest exactly what she wants. It's like, no, that's, I mean, it's, it's an element, but it's also, you know, it's not the fullness. Power is like, you've already got it. Like it's already here. It was always here. It's completely innate. You don't have to keep proving that you have it. This is so cathartic. <laughs> so cathartic. Yeah, okay. So it's like... Everything I want is already here. Beauty, truth, freedom. These are the values I get to live in these values. I get to live with these things. It's like love, not you know, authenticity, I'm not seeking it, I'm not chasing it, I'm not going and get it, going out and getting it. I'm in it. I am it. So cool. What are, you know, I get to live in it. What it, <laughs> what the fuck this is what it looks like. You know, I got up, I did a beautiful embodiment, like fully like landing in my body and just feeling how juicy and how good it feels to be like embodied resistance training. I was like, this is, this is a thing, embodied resistance training. It's literally resistance training. So it's like training yourself to move with resistance and be with yourself through that. Like, mm, hallelujah. And then it was connection to self and then it was okay intuition what i want to explore express an experience today no outcomes no attachment to results and here we are therapy via live video <laughs> and i think yeah it's just so healing like it's so healing for the part of me that felt like i just got to perform and I've got to achieve and I've got to be good enough and I've got to be this and this and this. It's like, fuck, no wonder I didn't want to get out of bed. No wonder I was depressed when I was a teenager. Fuck. Huh. Because it's like, fucking hell. It's so antithetical to the, our natural state and our natural way of being as human beings. Like, our, your worth is innate, your value is innate, and yet your whole culture is set up to make you prove and work for those things that you already have and that are already inside of you. So of course you're going to be fucking depressed. Like, 
Looks like I have like a boy brand fringe. Of course you're not going to want to get out of bed. If you're enslaved in all these like beliefs about yourself and what life has to be. You know, I wouldn't want to get out of bed. And I didn't want to get out of bed if that's what I thought was awaiting me. It was more of like lies and bullshit. Now imagine like, okay, so every day you wake up, truth. It's all that's awaiting you, truth. You get to live in beauty, awesome. You get to live in freedom, awesome. You get to do what you love, awesome. You get to live in like fellowship and connection, awesome. I fucking love that. It's just like, it's such a different, I mean, it's such a true way of being. It's such a different way of being to the one that, you know, a lot of us were kind of brought up with. It's like, no wonder so many people are fucking depressed. We're just, you know, so out in, I was so out of alignment with my life natural way of being and just living in a way that was just so awful and ugly and I mean out of alignment and even in the ugliness I'm learning at the moment there's beauty in ugliness and there's truth in ugliness and there's value in ugliness just being able to stay like be with the ugliness is a great thing Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> so yeah, this is what I'm I'm taking into my day and this is how I'm experiencing my day. It's like, I already have everything that I want. I already am everything that I want and that I love. Cool. What do I want to do with it? I have this gift of life, right? And it's, I think that's like, that's such a crux, cor the core of it is like the crux of it is like, I have this gift of life. I've been given this gift of life, a life experience as myself. Why the fuck would I spend another second trying to prove that I'm worthy of this gift that I've already been, like gotten? It's like, imagine if, imagine if you like, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is a whole fucking culture, right? It's like, you know, you, you get a loan to pay for the thing and then you get the thing and then you spend the rest of the time paying it off. Fuck. But imagine like someone gives you, you know, someone gave me, like my sister gave me a pair of shoes for my birthday last year. I love these shoes and I wear them all the time. Imagine if I was still, rather than just like receiving the gift that she gave me, imagine if I was like, spent the whole year doing things to earn the shoes. <laughs> you know, like they're already paid for. I already have them. They are literally sitting right there. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I have to, you know, what would that even look like? <laughs> it would be all like, you know, I've got to like, you know, work for the shoes and, and let her know that I'm like, earn my, earn my, earn my keep and prove to her, prove to myself that I'm like, prove to her and myself. And I'm like worthy of keeping and having the shoes. It's like no one's coming to take them from you. Like no one is coming to take those shoes away from you. No one is coming to you've been given the I've been given this gift of life experience. No one is coming to take it away. Like, yes, we're gonna die, but like even that's not that's not death is not a loss. Death is not like a, you know, you didn't oh, I used to think this. I used to think death was like a punishment. Like you weren't living your life properly. So we're going to take away the gift of life, dude. See, this is what I mean when I, yeah. Okay. My body's telling me it's time to wrap up. Um, well that's how I'm interpreting my body signals right now. <laughs> I can talk more about this later. Okay. Um, fucking hell. This great video. Great video. Really great video. I'm really proud of myself just for not, yeah. Getting caught up in the fantasy of what I think I should be doing today and actually allowing my intuition to, yeah, allowing myself to follow my intuition and be like, okay, cool. This is what I want to create. And this is great. This is, feels really nourishing. And there's literally zero attachment to like the outcome. There is no outcome of this. This is the outcome. <laughs> there is no outcome. I am the outcome. I am the outcome. You've been given the gift. I've been given the gift of life. Let's just go like fucking use it. Like I'll use my shoes. You know, like I'll put on my shoes and do cool shit with them. I'm put on this like fucking bodysuit of life. I've put on this meat suit. I, don't, I really don't like that term. I've put on this skin. Let's go use it. <laughs> and by use it, I don't mean like, you know, exploit it. Like I'm not going to go like make my shoes 
earn me money, you know, like exploit them and make them earn their keep. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right. I got to end this here because otherwise I'm going to go on like 50 million tangents, but I'm not going to use myself or exploit myself in order to like get something. It's just like express and explore and experience and use as in like employ, like how do I want to express, live in, embody, love, and then just fucking see what happens because, you know, reality. Mm, so good, so good. All right, thank you for listening. Um, I'm kind of just saying that to myself because I'm the only one here. <laughs> oh, and if you, as you, have also listened to this, I mean, yeah, you're choosing this experience, you're choosing to listen to this video, so... I don't even need to say, like, I hope you got something out of it because you're here, so obviously you are. That's it. There's no, like, thank you. There's no, like, I, I feel like people say a lot, like, thank you for listening. Thank you. It's like, it's, it's, in, it's innate. It's, it's self-evident. Like, of course. I, you know, 